Hello and uh, welcome back to this lecture on microsystems fabrication by using advanced uh, manufacturing processes. Uh, so far uh, we have actually seen variety of uh, uh, MEMS grade processes which are used uh, for fabrication of the devices. And uh, as uh, in the introduction section we have already mentioned in great details about the use of some of the advanced uh, manufacturing techniques particularly uh, uh, the abrasive jet machining, ultrasonic machining, uh, electro discharge machining, electrochemical machining, so on so forth in the, in the fabrication of MEMS uh, devices. Well, we are going to actually review some of these basic processes, non-conventional processes before going ahead with utilizing them in the MEMS fabrication. So, the purpose of, purpose of today's uh, lecture really is to give you uh, an understanding about um, starting from the fundamental level uh, some of these non-conventional processes or the way that you can estimate how the material gets removed uh, particularly in a very small area. And then the idea is that those processes uh, which are learned uh, in this manner are translated uh, to make or fabricate micro level devices. So, there would be a section of the process uh, of a certain kind followed by um, the, the application of the process or a group of processes to the fabrication of certain micro devices. So, let us uh, begin today's lecture uh, by uh, just briefly reviewing uh, whatever has been done in the last uh, class. So, in the last uh, lecture we actually uh, revised or uh, understood about these polymer uh, MEMS fabrication, uh, polymers uh, like PDMS, PMMA, Teflon so on so forth are quite often used for fabrication of uh, microsystems or microsystem uh, grade devices. And uh, some of the materials and methods were discussed in great details of this fabrication uh, which would include a bunch of different processes called soft lithography. Uh, for example, replication and molding, micro contact printing, uh, micro capillary molding, uh, dip and lithography so on so forth. And then we also learned a little bit about how gas plasmas can be used uh, for uh, the fabrication of at least polymer grade or polymer MEMS devices. So, we learned about some of the fundamentals of plasma and then uses of the plasma particularly uh, the different how the plasmas can be formulated and how they can be used for creating uh, wafer level bonding between two or more wafers of such devices. And this application is particularly very useful for hybrid devices in the MEMS area. So, uh, today we will now look into the one of the first fundamental mechanical non-conventional processes called the AJM or abrasive jet machining. So, as I have already illustrated in my previous lectures, uh, non-conventional domain can be split up into either mechanical removal of material or thermal removal of material or chemical slash electrochemical removal of material, meaning thereby that the way and means in which material removal would take place uh, uh, by supplying energy of different forms makes these categorizations happen. So, in mechanical removal of material the energy mostly supplied is mechanical in nature and that can be the impact of abrasives or uh, small grains of uh, relatively higher hardnesses which can impede with a surface, impede into a surface and try impinge into a surface and try to remove off the material by brittle fracture. So, let us look at one of the fundamental processes AJM or abrasive machining. So, as you uh, can see in this slide here in the AJM process uh, the basic material removal would take place uh, by impingement of fine abrasive particles. These particles would typically have hardnesses uh, which are higher than the hardness of the workpiece surface which is uh, being removed by the impact of such particles and uh, the particles are carried together by means of a jet of air with high velocity. So, that they can come with high velocity and impede into a surface as you can see here in this particular region the particles are coming down through a small orifice uh, and uh, they are being carried by a uh, high speed uh, air and abrasive uh, uh, mixture which is flown at a velocity of about 150 to 300 meters per second. And this nozzle is taken very close to the surface where you have to do the material removal. Thereby, the, the impact which the abrasive grains would have therein on the surface here causes 
the brittle fracture to take place and the material gets removed and the velocity uh, or, or the high velocity air which is flowing along with these abrasives kind, kind of takes the material away from the surface. So, this is very prominent method particularly for bulk micro machining where you are actually trying to subtract uh, material from a surface as you have uh, been taught uh, earlier that there are two different kinds of uh, machining micro machining one is uh, surface and another is bulk surface is an additive process uh, for the sake of repetition and uh, bulk machining is a subtractive process we are actually removing the material uh, from the surface. So, this is a subtractive process where we are trying to remove the material from the surface and uh, as you can see here again back to the slide. Uh, uh, typically, there is a parameter called the nozzle tip distance NTD, uh, which means this is the distance uh, of standoff uh, position of the nozzle with respect to the workpiece. So, if distance is varied, uh, the way that or the behavior that the abrasive particles would have uh, on the surface or on the way from the nozzle into the surface would vary greatly and which will result in different kind of machining removal rates. So, this nozzle tip distance is a very important parameter which has to be controlled uh, for the purpose of micro machining. The tips are normally made up of a very hard material like let us say one of the materials could be tungsten carbide or uh, maybe some other uh, gem can be used uh, for uh, making the, the tip. The idea is that whenever the hard abrasive particles flow around this tip as you can see here they should not be able to uh, cause much wear. So, the wear of the tip should be minimal in nature. So, typically the diameters of such tips which are used uh, are about 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters about 300 to 500 microns and uh, this gives us an opportunity to really work at a micro domain and trying to get very small areas machined using such AJM or abrasive jet machined techniques. As we will show later on there are some illustrations where you can actually see an impending an, uh, an impinging jet of abrasives creating uh, passed through a mask of course, to impinge the features which are there on the mask onto the surface of the material. So, the typical uh, diameter of the grains which are used uh, as particles here are about 0 0.025 uh, millimeters or so, it is about uh, 25 microns and uh, the air discharges at a pressure of several atmospheres uh, thus creating a suitable high velocity uh, to emanate out of um, uh, the nozzle in such machining processes. Uh, as far the mechanics of the AJM process uh, works it really works uh, by creating a tiny brittle fracture uh, onto the surface uh, which gets impinged by the abrasive particle at a high velocity. And, uh, uh, basically as I have already illustrated before uh, for example, this is a fracture which is happening on, on this particular surface by an impinging grain and uh, the velocity of the air which flows along with this grain uh, is sufficient to dislodge it off from the work area and carry it out and that way there can be a material removal which can take place because uh, the new area which is formulated is really this crater and it is open to another impingement and subsequently more brittle fracture. So, uh, basically it is a, a fracture by fracture which would happen in succession for a cavity to be created within the work piece. So, as you can see here the wear uh, particle here is carried away by the flowing air or gas in this particular uh, illustration uh, shown. So, uh, if you look at uh, the process uh, more closely, uh, it is more suitable when the work material is uh, uh, actually brittle or fragile because then the uh, it, it automatically promotes the process of brittle fracture. And uh, if you look at the various models which are available uh, for estimation of the material removal rates, uh, the most uh, widely used model is uh, that by uh, Sarkar and Pandey, which was formulated in 1980. And this is more on so called experimental observation, where the MRR or material removal rate uh, is actually represented by this particular equation here, where uh, Z is the number of abrasive particles impacting per unit time on the surface, D is the mean diameter of the abrasive grains, and uh, velocity of the abrasive grains is V, 
uh, rho is the density of the abrasive material as such, material of those grains. HW is the hardness of the work material that you are machining yeah, using uh, this method. And uh, the, the x here is really a constant, uh, which is uh, automatically uh, imparted because of uh, regression analysis. And this uh, is an observational formula, it is an experimentally determined formula, which has uh, come out uh, from this uh, paper of Sarkar and Pandey in 1980. So, as you can see here, the, uh, the, the material removal rate of an AGM system is uh, proportional to the uh, cube of the mean diameter of the abrasive grain, which is obvious, because it is kind of giving an idea of how much volume is dislodged uh, by looking at the volume of one grain. Z is the number of abrasive particles impacting per unit time, thereby meaning that if you have uh, more number of particles at a higher moving at a higher velocity, uh, you know there would be a component of velocity uh, contributed to the MRR. And in fact, the number of abrasive particles uh, in one unit of time, uh, if it is closely packed, that means the abrasive uh, is highly loaded onto the onto the uh, flowing gas that also increases the material removal rate. And uh, of course, the other parameters of importance are the hardness of the work material and the density of the abrasive material. So, that is about it, uh, about the mechanics, the process parameters which are involved in this abrasive jet machining process. Um, the, you know, you can evaluate uh, the process by characterizing the, of course, the material removal rate MRR. You can also illustrate or you can also um, characterize the process by the geometry of the cut that you would need to formulate. Uh, you can um, also characterize the process by the amount of surface roughness, which is produced by uh, the, the process in, in relation to a surface and of course, the rate of nozzle wear. So, any good process uh, machining process would need uh, typically uh, a lower uh, wear rate, thereby um, meaning that the nozzle has a better working life, um, it, it should be able to produce uh, low roughness surfaces. And then you know you should be able to uh, do complicated geometries in terms of machining and the MRR should be high yield, meaning thereby the MRR should be higher. So, the major parameters which uh, are the controlling parameters for some of these process characteristics are for example, the, the composition strength, size, mass and flow rate of the abrasive material. Okay. So, if the abrasive is, uh, what is the hardness level of abrasive for example, uh, with respect to the work piece on which uh, you are machining. Uh, what is the size uh, for example, of the grains, because as you know the MRR typically is dependent on cube of the diameter of a grain. Uh, what is also the mass flow rate of the absorb, uh, the, the abrasive, which gives an indication of the numbers uh, per unit uh, time if you are packing the grains more, thereby increasing the mass flow rate, you are basically increasing the z value of uh, the, the machining. And then of course, the composition uh, also is uh, very important as, as to what is the uh, quality of the gas, which is uh, flowing along with the abrasive or does it have its own etching uh, effect on the, uh, the surface, which are which is being machined. The other uh, very important aspect is uh, the composition of the, the gas, the pressure and the velocity of the gas. So, the composition of abrasive is important as we learned from the previous step uh, and uh, the composition of the gas also is very, very important as I just told a little bit uh, ago, because uh, sometimes uh, the gases can be uh, derogatory to the surface in terms of giving its edge characteristics. It may be able to soften the surface. Uh, where you are actually flowing the, the abrasive material. And of course, the pressure and velocity of the gas is very, very important uh, for illustrating what is the overall material removal rate associated with the process. The nozzle geometry again is very important for the purpose of uh, determining some of these process characteristics. Uh, typically, um, you know circular or square type nozzles are the most preferred geometries in this particular case. Uh, the nozzle material should be having a higher hardness than the hardness of the abrasive grains, therefore reducing the, the nozzle wear rate 
and of course, the distance of uh, and this is very important the distance from an inclination to the workpiece surface. So, when you are basically uh, trying to create a, a small uh, crevice or a hole in a material, uh, what is important is that what is the standoff distance or the nozzle tip distance N T D uh, which would create you know the MRR would vary as per this distance and also what is the inclination at which the nozzle is placed with respect to the work surface. And for example, some of the cases where holes are needed to be etched uh, in an inclined manner, uh, this would suit to be the best process which is available for creating such micro holes and micro features within materials particularly from MEMS aspects. So, when we look at uh, the quality of the abrasive uh, mainly there are two types of abrasives which are commonly used in the industry one is aluminum oxide and uh, a silicon carbide and the diameter as we already mentioned are about uh, very often 10 to 50 microns range of these grains although 25 to 30 microns is really what is most commonly used and uh, basically for good uh, wear action on the surfaces the abrasive grains uh, should have sharp edges. Uh, because uh, sharper is the, the profile of the grain, better is the impingement of these grains on the surface and more typically would be the MRR because of that. Uh, the reuse of abrasive powders is normally not recommended, uh, because uh, as you are machining uh, the surface uh, along with uh, let us say a, uh, uh, an abrasive jet and uh, there is continuous material removal. Uh, so, uh, whatever is the waste collection unit for this whole system would have metal which has been removed as well as uh, the grain along with it. And uh, after a while when the grain gets completely loaded with, uh, uh, with metal, it is very difficult to filter out or clean the gains out of the metal, because the metal in the process of very high level of uh, deformation and uh, sometimes causing brittle fracture, there is a level at which the metal is coming or removing. Uh, there may be a case where the, the particle may get actually softly sticking to the metal or you know uh, it may plastically weld to the metal and it is not easy to clean the particle off the metal. Okay. And so, when you are using that material uh, the grains may not be able to impinge uh, more onto the surface. Okay, and the ploughing action would be lost, sometimes the sharpness of the grain could be lost. So, therefore, uh, reuse is normally not recommended and uh, because uh, there would be a decrease of the cutting capacity and uh, then sometimes the issue of clogging of nozzle is also very important. The orifice itself is very very small which sends out uh, particles along with uh, let us say high velocity air and uh, supposing if there is a metal to metal uh, contact there of coated metal onto a grain which you have recirculated back there is always a possibility of clogging uh, the nozzle with such material. And therefore, uh, you know the characteristic the process characteristics would be totally changed because of the reduced area uh, from which the grains uh, emanate out. Uh, so, contamination uh, is really prevented and also reuse of the abrasive powder is normally not recommended in some uh, of these processes. Also the mass flow rate of the abrasive uh, particles depends on the, on the pressure and the flow rate of the gas. Uh, as you have already seen before that MRR also is heavily dependent on both the velocity of the gas as well as the volume uh, which is proportional to the cube of the abrasive particles diameter. Uh, so, therefore, uh, because abrasive particle is the main cause of moving the material away the mass flow rate the rate at which it comes and hits uh, the surface uh, would typically depend only on the, the ambient pressure and the velocity gas velocity. Okay. So, uh, that is one important point about how the abrasive is loaded and uh, if you look at uh, the various parameters like let us say how you are mixing uh, the, the abrasive with respect to air and there is something a parameter called mixing ratio which I will just define. Uh, basically, it only indicates that if you are increasing the mixing ratio, there is of course, an optimal best of uh, material removal rate as can be illustrated by this point here at a certain mixing ratio m dash, meaning thereby that this is probably the optimum uh, you know uh, case of mixing uh, or loading of the oppressive onto uh, gas. So, uh, the 
or the mass flow rate you can define basically the mixing ratio you can define basically by looking at the volume flow rate uh, of the abrasive particles uh, per unit the volume flow rate of the carrier gas. Okay. So, if uh, you are loading more uh, then the volume flow rate of the abrasive particle would increase and the mixing ratio would increase. So, if you look at various mixing ratios the more you are loading the, the air abrasive slurry and as such increasing the mixing ratio in the process the material removal rate would first increase okay. and then after a certain optimum peak is reached there is chaos or confusion because the loading density has kind of optimized. Okay. So, these are the op this is the optimized uh, loading density and then it uh, kind of comes down uh, at a lower mixing ratio. So, this is the optimum best in terms of material removal rate. So, uh, there are there are some other interesting factors like for example, if the abrasive mass flow rate is increased uh, the material removal rate would almost always increase because of the increase z the number of uh, uh, particles which are impacting per unit time which would increase because of the abrasive mass flow rate. So, this this is kind of all about how you design or select the abrasive for uh, operating the process. The other aspect uh, which is involved is uh, is the gas which is uh, actually uh, the most important component sometimes in the AJM process. And uh, typically the AJM unit uh, normally operates at a pressure of about 0.2 to 1.0 uh, Newton per millimeter square. Uh, and the composition of the gas and a very high velocity uh, has a significant impact on the MRR as you have seen before in the Sarkar and Pandey's uh, MRR estimation method uh, even if the mixing ratio is not changed. Okay. So, if you are not loading any more abrasives per unit volume of the air still uh, it does have a very very significant effect. Uh, sometimes there is a automatic softening which is created by the gas because it may have some derogatory impact onto the surface that it is uh, in impacting and so it makes uh, brittle fracture more um, prominent because of this pre processing of the surface. So, because of all this uh, the, the gas really is a very important component. The other important component is the nozzle in abrasive jet machining uh, and uh, the nozzle materials as we have already again repeatedly mentioned should be hard uh, typically tungsten carbide or sapphire aluminum oxide can be very suitable materials uh, and uh, sometimes tungsten carbide material may have an average lifetime of about 12 to 30 hours whereas sapphire may have about approximately 300 hours or so. So, sapphire is in fact much more harder than tungsten carbide. So, normally uh, for did I mean uh, sort of uh, standard operations of the industry uh, cross sectional area of the orifice uh, is circular in nature or it can be sometimes rectangular and uh, the orifice uh, can have an area of about 50 to 200 microns or so. Uh, in terms of uh, that small uh, you know cross section through which the, uh, the, uh, the velocity the jet, jet, jet actually emanates out into the work piece. So, these are some of the important aspects of uh, the AJM process in summary uh, you need to know about the abrasive particles the selection of that you need to know about what is the carry carrier gas and what is the composition uh, of this uh, carrier gas. Uh, you also need to know about the operating pressure and the velocity of the gas and then of course, a very important part is also the nozzle from which uh, the, the jet emanates. Let us look at some other important aspects of AJM and as I told you before that there is this uh, term called standoff distance or nozzle to tip distance and it is self explanatory as given in the, uh, the description here that it is the distance at which the nozzle rests with respect to the surface which you are machining. So, obviously, uh, in between the nozzle and the surface uh, there is full atmosphere and uh, there is air which is around and it is obvious to logically or intuitively see that as this distance keeps on increasing the air resistance which comes between the work piece and the nozzle to the particles which are impinging out of the jet would also increase thereby reducing 
uh, their velocity. Although uh, there are two different factors which would interplay here. One is that if you are shooting uh, a particle out of a jet at a high velocity and uh, you know at some acceleration value at some acceleration value okay, because of the impact of the jet. So, the acceleration is uh, going to take uh, this particle to a higher velocity if the distance that you are allowing it to move is more as you know v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s keeping acceleration constant the velocity at u equal to our initial velocity equal to 0 the final velocity that you can achieve is really proportional to the root of the distance. But um, at the same time a particle which is accelerated as you can see here in the downward direction at an acceleration a meets a drag force. Okay. And this drag force is typically because of the air uh, around the particle and uh, which is the atmosphere around the particle and this drag force is able to deaccelerate the particle. Okay. And so therefore, it is an interplay. So, in some domain the uh, root 2 a s the velocity is the more dominant term and in some more domain if the standoff distance is increased uh, further and further the drag force becomes the more dominant part. So, it is an interplay between both the forces. Therefore, if you have a lower nozzle tip distance uh, or at low nozzle tip distances an increase in the nozzle tip distance would really uh, result in an increase in the material removal rate. Okay. But then uh, this really is the point from which the interplay between the, the drag force okay, and the acceleration of the particle. comes into play and you can see that the uh, the material removal rate is kind of plateaued right because both of them are interplaying together and then after uh, the distance is increased any further from this particular point the drag force becomes dominant okay so drag force is dominant this of course is the point where the accelerative force is dominant Right. And so, therefore, uh, you know you really need to choose your operating characteristics on this particular trend. So, if you are placed somewhere here, you can still increase the nozzle tip distance to uh, have an optimum best. If you are placed somewhere here, uh, then you need not really do much and then if you are placed here, then you should rather move back to this plateaued region. So, that you can actually operate at a optimal material removal rate. Uh, sometimes, uh, the practical limitation particularly of a micro systems uh, micro system uh, or micro micro uh, device uh, is that you have to operate at a certain distance from this particular uh, device because you are using a mask in the process and this mask is actually a hard material and it has a certain thickness through which the abrasive is being routed so there are openings on the mask or windows of the mask through which the abrasive is being routed and this strikes and uh, removes uh, the material uh, where it makes an impact uh, by creating brittle fracture. So, the ND, NTD the nozzle tip distance is really something that may not be that much in control uh, of um, a designer uh, and so therefore, where you are exactly operating on the characteristics is a matter of great significance particularly for micro systems fabrication using non conventional machining. And so, uh, as you can see here uh, the other aspect of uh, a greater nozzle tip distance is in terms of the sharpness of the feature or the resolution of the feature which would come here. For example, uh, if supposing the nozzle tip distance is close or it is shorter and the nozzle is close to the surface the spread that it would allow this beam coming from the or the, uh, the jet coming from the abrasive tip would be more in comparison to maybe somewhere here where the spread is much more. And so, therefore, if you are at a different nozzle tip distance you may have to also take care of the fact that what really would be the eventual shape whether it will be spread like this or whether it is a sharp feature like this depending on the situation of micro machining that you have to carry out on the surface 
you may have to operate at different NTDs. So, that is about it uh, regarding the AJM process. I uh, would just like to illustrate some more uh, examples. Here for example, you can see photographs uh, of an actual machined cavity and for different nozzle tip distances. The distances shown are 2 millimeters, which is corresponding to the figure A, 6 millimeters for the figure B and 20 millimeters, so on and so forth and 20 millimeters for the figure F. So, you can see that the spread of the, uh, the cut profile uh, would happen obviously, because of a higher nozzle tip distance. So, these are real experimental uh, results, uh, where this 1 mm shows the scale uh, at which these photographs have been taken. So, I already discussed uh, in great details about the mixing ratio and uh, also the influences. Uh, uh, on the material removal rate of uh, the, uh, the process. And so, the mixing ratio as I earlier defined is uh, known by this quantity here, the volume flow rate of abrasive particles by the volume flow rate of the carrier gas. And so, if you are loading more, then this mixing ratio goes up and vice versa. So, we can um, categorize this as U A or U abrasive. A is a subscript for abrasive dot, uh, meaning thereby the volume uh, Ua is coming per unit time okay, from the, the nozzle surface and Ug dot is basically the volume flow rate of the carrier gas. Okay. And uh, in place of uh, the mixing ratio, there is another uh, parameter called the mass ratio alpha, which may be uh, more easy to determine sometimes and it is uh, uh, given by this uh, mass of the abrasive to the mass of the abrasive and carrier gas, the ratio between that. So, it is typically uh, because it is mass, it is a function of the abrasive mass flow rate, uh, this is m dot okay, in both the cases and this is uh, the abrasive and carrier combined mass flow rate. So, it is a ratio between the two and you can actually intercalculate between uh, alpha and m provided you are given some parameters and I will just like to show you one or two example problems where we calculate this. So, during an AJM uh, process for example, the mixing ratio is uh, that is used is 0 0.2 and I have to calculate the mass ratio of the ratio of density uh, of the abrasive and density of the carrier gas is given and it is equal to 20. Okay. So, here we know the mixing ratio already from the earlier definition as V A dot by V G dot. This is the volume flow rate of the abrasive, this is the volume flow rate of the gas. And we also know that the mass ratio alpha is given by the mass flow rate of the abrasive by the mass flow rate of the abrasive and gas taken together. So, if we just do a simple calculation here that the mass flow rate is nothing, but the density of the abrasive times of the volume flow rate of the abrasive. Okay. So, we can call it let us say rho A is density of abrasive and V A dot is volume flow rate of abrasive okay. and this can be written down as the density of abrasive volume flow rate of abrasive plus density of the carrier gas that you are using times of the volume flow rate of the carrier gas. That is really the mass flow rate of the abrasive gas mixture and that is really what alpha is. And so, somewhere around this mixing ratio which is given to be equal to 0 0.2 in this case in the question is somehow embedded in this term for the mass ratio. So, we can calculate the mass ratios inverse 1 by alpha by looking at you know this particular uh, inverted equation rho a v dot a plus rho g v dot g divided by rho a v dot a and this becomes equal to 1 plus rho g by rho a 
times of v g dot by v a dot. And uh, therefore, we already have uh, the density of the abrasive and carrier gas and that ratio typically uh, is given here okay, in the inverted manner. And then we also have the inverted ratio of the v dot g by v dot a. So, this becomes equal to 1 plus density of abrasive by density of the carrier gas is given to be 20. So, this becomes 1 by 20 times of 1 by 0 0.2 and uh, that is really equal to 1.25. So, therefore, calculating the mass ratio by inverting this is actually 80 or so the inverse of 1.25. Okay. So, that is how you can calculate uh, some of these problems uh, and these are very important tools, because you will be able to use that in MEMS fabrication as I will show you a little bit later. Let us do another problem numerical problem on AJM. So, in this particular illustration for example, the diameter of the nozzle is given is 1 mm and uh, the jet velocity is also given to be 200 meters per second. And so, you will have to find the volumetric uh, flow rate just for uh, the estimation sake from a practical problem how you get uh, these things of carrier gas and abrasive mixture. Okay. So, obviously, the fluid mechanics teaches you that cross sectional area times of velocity becomes the volume flow rate. So, in this case it is a circular cross section. So, the cross sectional area uh, of the nozzle is given by pi times of square of the radius and of course, we convert it into a reasonable CGS system. So, centimeter square and we also, so the volume flow rate has to be estimated in centimeter cube per second. So, we are just converting everything into CGS system and the velocity is again a velocity of the gas is again 200 times of 10 to the power of 2 centimeters per second. So, the volume flow rate equals the cross sectional area times of the velocity centimeter cube per second, which is actually equal to about 151 centimeter cube per second. So, you can actually this way compute uh, the various aspects of an AJM uh, process and you can use that further for MEMS applications. Now, let us look into another aspect of how this abrasive jet machine normally is or what kind of parameters we need to monitor while designing such a machine or a system. So, typically all these abrasive jet machines are manufactured by these company called air abrasives in New York and they are probably you know the single manufacturers for this particular system. If you look at the details of the system here, this uh, schematic is very well illustrative of uh, what all components go into uh, an abrasive jet machine. So, you have a compressor unit here as you can see, which uh, would give out pressure, pressured air, high pressure air and uh, then there is of course, a drainage port, which ensures that the pressure is maintained. Uh, within a certain level, there is a relief valve also, which has been given into this chamber, which contains uh, the air at high pressure. And then of course, um, there are some other aspects like uh, the air filter cum dryer, uh, which is used for 
for, for uh, circulating the air into the chamber for cleaning it uh, and uh, uh, then uh, this this once this uh, this compressed air is stored in this particular tank here uh, you can uh, monitor the pressure of this by a uh, gauge which is fitted towards the end of this uh, compressor tank and you have another opening valve for this air to proceed further in this direction and there are certain regulators here which you can uh, manually control so that you can actually change uh, the the pressure of the inlet air at which it should come and this is the valuable pressure really for the mixing process which happens in this chamber here so the the chamber contains uh, um, you know an abrasive feeder as you can see here which down pours the abrasive material onto the air at the pressure uh, which has been regulated by means of these manual valves and the air abrasive mixture is really created within this particular chamber as you can see and is fed uh, into the nozzle in this direction. Now, there is again a pressure gauge which is very close to the tip to uh, find out what is uh, the pressure at which the abrasive would emanate from uh, the nozzle and this nozzle is at a certain standoff distance from the surface uh, in consideration the workpiece surface in consideration the workpiece of course is uh, duly affixed on a fixture so that uh, it does not move and it is capable of x y z motion particularly at the micro systems fabrication case you may have to design this fixture in a manner so that it can give you a good resolution in terms of movement of uh, the various features over above the nozzle. So, in uh, the micro systems uh, fabrication case the only other component which is useful here is a mask which is like a uh, open mask okay and this open mask is used for guiding the abrasive particles onto the surface uh, thus creating certain features and structures on the surface so they are like small wells and the remaining area of the mask is pretty hard so it is not amenable to much wear and the particles which strike this are uh, the particles which do not have any uh, machining. So, uh, so they are uh, the free particles and the particles which actually create the fracture go through these small cavities on the mask and they etch off inside the or they or they remove or machine the features on the workpiece exactly of the size of the mask with some limitations. So, the standoff distance can be controlled by varying the nozzle position or the workpiece resistance with respect to one another. So, typically the, the gas propulsion system uh, should be able to supply clean and dry gases, gases could be air, nitrogen, carbon dioxide and this is used for propelling the, the abrasive particles and uh, of course, the gas may be supplied either by a cylinder or a compressor. Uh, if it is a heavily used machine then typically it comes with an inbuilt compressor unit and uh, in case of a compressor. Uh, there has to be a filter. Okay. So, the gas has to be somehow filtered here uh, before feeding okay. so that uh, uh, you can have clean samples of abrasives mixing with clean uh, gas. Sometimes a dryer is used because there is a moisture uh, or some oil content which is there. So, therefore, there has to be stages of filtration before the air can be proceeded into this mixing chamber. Also one more important factor in abrasive machining is that whatever gas uh, you are using has to be uh, a very very non toxic in nature because you are exposing the operator uh, whoever is using uh, this machine to, uh, to the gas. So, therefore, one aspect is of course, of the operator safety and prevention the other aspect is how you can uh, have a safe uh, system uh, with absolutely um, you know safe gas uh, which is non poisonous in nature uh, and therefore, this aspect has to be kept in mind while designing the system as such. So, this is all about abrasive jet machines and um, I would like to uh, now go to another process. The other uh, mechanical method of importance that I would like to uh, proceed with uh, before actually looking into the applications aspects of some of these methods for micro devices is the ultrasonic machining or USM process. So, as I told you uh, before that there are various ways and means in which you can deliver energy in a non conventional process onto a work uh, surface there can be a mechanical means there can be 
uh, means where you can use thermal way of removal uh, by interaction with high energy beams, uh, laser, so on so forth. And then there can be a chemical, electrochemical way and means of removal of material. So, here uh, the second part of the process which is uh, important for understanding uh, some of the micro device fabrication as will come later is the, um, the USM or the ultrasonic machining. And uh, the ultrasonic machining basically was uh, developed uh, in about uh, 1945 or so by J. O. Farrer. And uh, the principle uh, in this particular machining is very simple that uh, instead of having a direct impact of the grains uh, that typically happens with uh, uh, like for example, you saw in AJM with the velocity of air. In this particular case, the grains are squeezed between uh, the surface, the work surface and a tool head. And uh, these uh, squeezing action is sort of a hammering action which is the primary material removal mechanism uh, in this process, this USM process. And uh, the material, the abrasive material typically comes in a slurry format and the slurry uh, is uh, posted between the work piece and the tool. And therefore, there is a zone between the work piece and the tool which is continuously flooded by slurry which is recirculated back and forth. Uh, which of which contains these abrasive uh, particles. So, uh, in, in a nutshell uh, the only difference between the abrasive jet machining and the USM ultrasonic machining is that in this case there is a positive impact of a tool head onto the abrasive circle uh, particles which does ploughing action on the work piece. And in the other case uh, that is AJM there was the impact of uh, the standalone grain which is being carried with a certain pressure uh, with a, a particular jet. So, the first machine tool as I already mentioned was developed in uh, you know 1954 after J. O. Ferrer first proposed about that this can be done uh, in the uh, you know machine tool technology. And originally USM uh, used to be for finishing operations uh, on components produced by electro spark machining. And uh, basically that was so, because you could give short strides of uh, very high ultrasonic frequencies of impact, thus creating a uh, averaging effect, uh, because every impact would create some kind of a brittle fracture. But at the time for which it the impingement would happen would be very less depending on the frequency and there would be a cyclic impact, there would be an average than a rising of the surface and it would be used mostly for a, as a finishing process. Of course, uh, it was superseded by other more developed processes like EDM electro discharge machining processes which were developed later on, which are in fact much more uh, you know in terms of planarizing a surface than any USM process stand alone. So, ultrasonic uh, machining also gains uh, some prominence uh, in particularly electrically non-conducting or sometimes even semi-conducting and brittle. Uh, materials in expanding the electronic industry. And uh, that uh, would actually have its own um, connotation, because uh, uh, there were not many methods which would really be able to uh, finish or sometimes polish uh, materials which would not have a conducting property. Okay. And because this is a mechanical means of addition of energy, therefore, all materials which would otherwise be moved or removed with an electrical method uh, would actually uh, be now uh, planarized or machined using mechanical method in the USM process. So, this is how the process looks like you have a tool head uh, which comes and strikes on the slurry, the slurry is moved between the uh, work piece and the tool head at a certain rate and the slurry typically can contain mixture of abrasives and water. Uh, and this tool head forces down at a certain frequency and the squeezes the abrasive grain against the work piece thus causing uh, brittle fracture. So, typically it should involve a tool uh, for example, which is made up of a ductile and tough material. And uh, because it vibrates with a very high frequency, uh, it has to be amenable to 
the, the process as such by having a high uh, modulus of elasticity and uh, a continuous uh, flow of an abrasive uh, slurry is made in a small gap to uh, ensure that the material removal that is happening is carried away along with the grain which has been used for the impingement, impingement and the next set of grains come within this region. So, it is a dynamic equilibrium which is established that the grain comes here gets squeezed between the tool and the work piece it causes a brittle fracture the material moves away and the slurry actually moves along with the grain and the material outside. So, that new slurry can occupy its place for a better cutting action on the next cycle of the tool. So, the tool is gradually uh, fed with a uniform force and the impact of the hard impressive grain fractures the, the hard and brittle work surface and that results in the removal of the work material. So, uh, one important aspect that I would like to say is that typically frequencies as high as about 20 kilohertz and very small amplitudes in the level of microns are preferred uh, for the, uh, the feeding tool and a continuous feed force is given to this tool which is an important part in determining the MRR as we will just see the model the theoretical model that we will create a little bit later. And, uh, the also important are things or aspects like what is the velocity of the flow of slurry or what is the, uh, the, uh, the material of the work piece that you are trying to machine or material of the tool with which you are trying to uh, impact uh, the abrasive grains. So, uh, you know we, you now kind of understand the basic uh, of both the AGM and the USM process. Uh, in the so I would like to end my lecture here today, but then I would like to continue uh, next time with a theoretical model of estimation of the material removal rate for such an USM process. And once both these processes are well defined and fundamentally clear, then I'll tell you some aspects about how you can use these processes for developing micro systems, micro devices, so on and so forth, uh, which would be subsequently available in a lecture. Thank you.